Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Leatherman Free K2 and T2 and look at the good and the bad and also compare their value performance and options compared to tools like the Swiss Army Tinker and Leatherman Skeletool. We have a lot to break down and discuss on this episode of Gideon's Tactical. Well, welcome folks to another video. Thanks for joining us today on this episode. As we break down these K2 and T2 multi-tools from Leatherman. Now, these are in their free series. And if you've been hiding under a rock for 2019, you may not be familiar with the free line. And the reason that they call it the free line and what Leatherman is producing is this concept of being able to do and access most, if not all of the tools on their multi-tools in this series with one hand, that it frees up one of your hands. So I previously have reviewed the P4 and it gives you the ability just with one hand to access almost every single tool, including the pliers and main blade, along with all the backup scissors and other blades. So it's a very unique and innovative system that utilizes magnets to retain the tools inside the body and then with the pressure of your thumb or finger, you're able to then free them up. And from my P4 experience, I've been very pleased with how it can perform and it does what it's supposed to do. Now in that previous video, you can see that when you compare it to a lot of the other tools, I don't know if it justifies price to performance and those type of things, it's functional. And for some people, you'll love it. For other people, you're gonna probably stick with the classics like the Wave and the Surge. Well, just recently, they have released now these K2 and way less easily deployable T2 in that same concept, using magnets for the retention, having a unique locking system that we're gonna look at today to give you the ability to not only one-handedly deploy the tools that are on there, but also the blades, but dropping the availability of pliers, which means that it's pretty obvious that they're trying to shoot for the market that has been ruled by the Swiss Army knife for decades, which is a very lofty goal. And we're gonna to discuss today whether or not these free T2, K2 are competitive with that and other Leathermans like the Skeletool to see, is it something worth investing in or is it too high a price or are there other issues that come into play? We're gonna break that all down in this video. So let me talk about this T2 right out of the gate. So the T2 has eight different tools and the functionality again is very easy to manipulate one-handed. And we have here a medium flat head, has slightly uh, sharpened angle here for a package opener in case you don't wanna use the knife for safety reasons. Uh, and then it can also operate as a pry tool, does all those fine. Now, what would make this different over, say, a Swiss Army knife is that it's not a slip joint. It actually has a locking mechanism that I actually really like and is easy to manipulate, regardless if you're right or left-handed. Right here, this little lever kind of acts as a lock back to the mechanism, and you lift it up and then depress it, and it swings out of the way. Then you depress it, and we have here a mini smaller flathead as well as an awl with a sharpened or almost sharpened edge here. So you could throw sparks even if you wanted to, uh, if you're using this in an outdoor scenario, otherwise it does have that little slit there to be able to sew if need be, or just punch holes in leather and other material and then smaller screwdriver uh, type of task. It functions well in that capacity. And then finally we have here our 3D Phillips head screwdriver, which works really well. And then we have our bottle cap opener that's integrated. And they're doing this with the free series, which I think is smart. You integrate it, give you your screwdriver, but also give you, give you your bottle cap opener at, in the same tool, just limiting the amount of space that you need. All right, so those all manipulate and function fine, one-handed, easy to deploy and then close up. The blade is a separate issue. Uh, it is made out of 420 high carbon. It is uh, hollow grind is 2.2 inches. What I have discovered because of how far back they have placed this little thumb notch here and the small short handle, it's very difficult for me to open it one handed. It's almost easier for me to put it upside down and use my middle finger and deploy the tool that way and then flip it and cut. That's actually how I've been having to do it because when I have it here in my large size hands, it's very awkward. 
it's doable, but I mean, I, I got to hold it in a really awkward way. I really got to put pressure on it. A lot of times I got to pinch it with both of my fingers to help get it all the way out. And it's just not easy and fun to manipulate. So it's, you can do it, but it's, in my opinion, it's actually just easier to go, go like that and flip it over and then use it. So lefties or righties, you could do it, but the one-handed manipulation of the knife blade is not uh, enjoyable. The blade itself functions properly. It's totally fine. It does the job for little EDC tasks. Even with some wood carving, I was able to get some really nice little shavings done and it's able to do all that. And the locking mechanism again, works and functions well and is easy to then close up. It's just the small short handle being only 3.6 inches long, uh, just doesn't give you a lot of real estate to grip. And then because the, th the slit isn't higher where it's naturally where your thumb would want to be, on most pocket knives, I gotta come all the way down here. I just don't have the leverage that I would like to then deploy the blade. So it's awkward, it's doable, but it's not fun to deploy the T2 knife blade. So up to this point, the tool's been okay. You know, yeah, I would really wish there was a better, faster deployment on the knife, but other than that, it's functioning pretty well. Now to the bad. The ergonomics on this thing are like a DeLorean from the 1980s. I mean, it is blockier than blocky. Someone must have been watching Back to the Future the night before they went in for design you know, consultations on the handle ergonomics of this tool. I do not understand why they went so blocky. I mean, the T800 uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger after the skin is ripped off would have been, like enjoyed the ergonomics on that. Like it's something that the Skynet computer would have designed for its robots than for human hands. I don't understand what happened uh, it is so blocky it is square to square with metal um, the angles aren't sharp it's just it I mean a block of wood would be more ergonomic so it actually fills out my hand well it's thick uh, so that it's at 0 0.62 on the overall thickness I believe I said earlier 3.6 uh, and weighs in at about three and a half ounces so it's a pretty compact package uh, it has a lanyard hole on the back, but uh, with the combination of just super blocky ergonomics, difficulty deploying the blade, and then this is really kind of the, the gut punch of it all, is on top of all of that, if you're going to design an, a system that's supposed to be like one-handed deployment and kind of compete with Swiss Army knives, one of my critiques that I always wish is that like Swiss Army knives had some sort of pocket clip. Uh, this model, the T2, does not come standard with a pocket clip. Uh, you have to buy that extra for about $10 is to get the little kit. Uh, once you get it, it functions fine, doesn't really create any more hot spots than you already got with holding a block of wood, basically, uh, or you know, a brick of metal in your hand with this tool. Uh, but that puts the price at $50 for the T2 and $40 being the standard without the pocket clip. So at $40, USA made, you know, the technology that's going into it, mm, it's a little, you know, steep, and particularly if you're trying to compete with Swiss Army knives, but when we try and put a pocket clip on it, which I think should come standard, uh, jack it up another $5 then, make it $45. The fact that I have to go out and purchase it separately, and it does come with the setup to be able to screw it in. Like it's just, you know, it's set up, they just decided to not sell it with the pocket clip, at least at this time. For $21, I can get this Swiss Army knife for basically half the cost. It doesn't have a pocket clip, but I have two blades working for me. Uh, I have you know, my 3D bit. I actually have a can opener on top of that. I have my awl, all those things, and actually a secondary smaller compact blade. It's hard to convince me that for 40 bucks, outside of just the one-handed deployment, and again, the blade doesn't really deploy that well, it's hard to justify double the price, if not even more, when we're talking about a pocket clip add-on. So all those things going together, I am not a fan at all of the T2, and it just doesn't make sense for me. Now for about $60, you can get the T4, which is the same ergonomics and same blade shape and everything from what I can see. They just add on a pair of scissors, which it's okay. I don't go out of my way for scissors. A lot of you guys love scissors on your multi-tools. It's not something that I need or require. Uh, and it does have little tweezers and a toothpick, I believe. But again, my Swiss Army Tinker that was like $21 has all those things and it's gonna be 21 versus 60 bucks, and the T4 will also come standard with a pocket clip. Again, that's a little, that, it's just irritating to me that they want to add 
particularly with the T2, that I have to pay more to get that pocket clip. So it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me any way you slice it. Now on to the K2, which might be somewhat redeeming of this line. But before we get into it, I need to take a quick time out to say thank you. The reason I was able to purchase this tool, because I was only going to do the T2 and then just talk about the K2 a little bit, is because recently we began to offer is just another way to help the content to continue to be created. Uh, because I went out and purchased all the gear you're seeing here. I purchased the T2, I purchased the K2, the other multi-tools and blades you're seeing, we've purchased here for testing and reviewing. Uh, I recently gave the opportunity on top of all of the links and we're gonna have all those and we appreciate when you guys purchase through all the hyperlinks to Blade HQ and Amazon and GP Knives as well as all the other places uh, that we have from 5.11 and Backcountry. We re really appreciate it when you see the gear here on the channel and you purchase through those links. But I offered the opportunity if you just wanna help by maybe giving like five, $10 a month through PayPal, just a simple kind of, hey, Keep doing what you're doing, Aaron. Appreciate it. There, uh, I offered that about a month ago. There was a huge outpouring. I want to say thank you guys. Because of your giving to, in the PayPal, I was able to go out and buy this so I could actually get my hands on it, get a full feel for it, so that I can continue to make the kind of content that you guys see here by purchasing this and then giving you my full feeling, pros and cons on the gear. So because of your... Uh, I don't, want, I don't know what the word is, donation, support, whatever, uh, through PayPal, I was able to go out and buy this guy for 80 bucks over on Blade HQ is what I paid for this. And again, we'll have all those links for you guys. So at the end of the video, regardless of what multi-tool or blade or concept connects with you, we appreciate when you purchase through those and check out that PayPal as well. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. It not only helped with this, but also helped with all a lot of behind the scenes stuff too. So just wanna say thank you guys, you're awesome. Now compared to the T2, the K2 is much larger in every way. Uh, it's just bigger, it's longer, it's uh, heavier, but there are some definite positives over the little T2 and all of the goofy ergonomics and difficulty opening and price and all that stuff. So uh, what you're looking at on the K2 is that since i was harping on the pocket clip you are getting a pocket clip standard and it is ambidextrous loop over tip up so i don't have any issues with that it is pretty high off the body uh, it doesn't help the ergonomics but it doesn't really hurt the ergonomics some people were asking like man is that going to create a hot spot i mean if you're really bearing down on it and you're carving like wood or something you can feel it it doesn't destroy your hand but it's there but for everyday carry and you know just cutting open some packaging working with your screwdriver or whatever it is fully functional doesn't cause any problems and i appreciate the loop over capability so that's really good and then you got your large lanyard hole there for 550 if you wanted to take it off you know and carry it more like a, a swiss army knife so there is that option but the ambidextrous also is is great so uh with the blade we have a, the blade itself which is way easier to deploy than the little t2 has that same kind of notch but it's larger it's more in line with where it's supposed to be now this is a 3.3 inch blade which is i think one of the best biggest if not the biggest blade on a quote-unquote like swiss army knife. Well, no some swiss army knives might be four inches but i mean it's big compared to most multi-tools even the free p4 definitely has a much smaller blade there now it has the hollow grind 420 high carbon steel uh, all those things that you would expect. So, you know, decent edge retention, not mind blowing in any way. You got a sheep's foot tip there, which I really like. Gives it a really cool shape, profile. You got a good precision tip. Opening packaging was really great with this. Good slicer. Just went through a lot of stuff, even carving, whittling. It was very, very functional in that regard. And then they do have that little um, locking mechanism that's very strong. There is no rock up, down, left, right. This thing is super tight, really locked in well. I really like that. And then it's very easy for you to then lift up and close one-handed. Now, the pit, it does have bronze bushings in here, which is good, but it's not a, a fast deployment. It's Even when I played with the pivot to try and loosen it up a little bit, I mean, I can do this all day, open and close, right? But it feels kind of sticky. I might even put some lube in there that just, just, not that there's gunk, it's just, it's just tight. And I tried to loosen it and it will not loosen. It's like, a, I don't know what the pivot that they're doing in there to cause that. And so to flick it open, I mean, I have really got to give it a good wrist flick because I can't seem to loosen it with the pivot. I mean, you got to like, to get it to go. Let's see if I can do it on frame here. There we go. 
you really got to give it a good whip. So uh, I really like the locking mechanism. I really like the blade shape. I have zero complaints with the blade and the locking. It's just the deployment I wish was a little faster, a little smoother there. Then on the flip side, which is nice, on the back side over here is where our three tools are, or you know, three that pop out. Now on the websites, it's saying seven. Um, what they say is that we have here that same package opener uh, and then a pry tool. I say this is like a thick flat head that you could absolutely use right there. They don't list it as that, but it could definitely you know, like big thick flat heads. You could do that. Then you've got your all with that sharpened edge again and then that smaller flat head. And then you've got your Phillips and your bottle cap opener, all that function very, very well. And it's actually this one right here, it, even compared to other multi-tools, when you bust out the screwdrivers, it's the most natural. It feels like a normal screwdriver, which I really liked a lot. I got the most torque on it uh, and it just felt good. And the torque is, it can definitely handle a good amount of torque on there. And then again, the magnets and the locking mechanism and all that. And I'll touch on the magnets themselves. If you did not watch our P4 video, it will absolutely, uh, like metal shavings and stuff, it will kind of pick up that stuff but it's not too difficult to clean out and it didn't gum up my p4 when i literally dumped a ton of metal shavings on it but it did you know get stuck on there uh, and i haven't had any sort of issues with the magnets causing problems with technology or anything like that i wouldn't lay it on a computer but uh it has an issue it hasn't had any issues with my phone or other things like that now according to my scale this did come in at right about five ounces the handle is going to be four and a half inches and the maximum thickness back here by the butt where all the tools are uh, is going to be 0 0.62 i believe on the thickness there and then obviously plus the the pocket clip but again the pocket clip is nice and helps it to ride you know real deep so really the the saving grace is where the what is it t2 is just like a block this they actually put some effort into the ergonomics and I, it doesn't really create any hot spots now this is aluminum you can also get the serrated versions i think it's like just uncoated aluminum this is gray of some kind uh and you know it's all done well i don't know die cast. it's not die cast but you know what i mean guys uh there, there's some nice texturing there the transition isn't too bad from the side to the top and then it's contoured in you get a little bit of a guard there the ergonomics are much better and will definitely feel more comfortable than say you're just standard you know multi-tool like a p4 this is okay but this uh k2 is definitely going to be a lot more ergonomic feel a lot more natural in the hand a lot more like a lot of your standard pocket knives so that's all big positives so with the k series k2 and they also have a k4 which just has a pair of scissors uh, on the end again so if you love scissors you know then that there is an option very similar and from what i can tell it's not any thicker or if it is it's like 0.2 thicker um like zero sorry 0 0.2 thicker uh so it shouldn't really affect too much so if if your entire life you've been sitting there and going man i just wish there was like a one-handed deploying locking pocket clip mounted swiss army knife leatherman has basically produced that with i believe both of these the t2 and t4 in my opinion is a total whoops don't go with those uh the k2 and k4 they do offer that and they are ergonomic uh, the blade shapes are functional, the materials, the design, they all seem to be really working well together. Now, this is what I want to throw out to you, though, as kind of a concept. This is $80. And at $80, is this the best way to spend that type of money? And the K4 is $90 with those scissors. So you're paying an extra 10 bucks for those scissors. Is that really the best way, particularly when we have something, say, like the Skeletool? For $60, I'm getting a one-handed deploying uh, knife. Yes, it's smaller. Yes, it's serrated. But for the same price of $80, bucks, you can get the 154CM, which is going to be a much better steel. And it's a plain edge. Uh, so for the exact same price point of this, for $20 less and for the same price as the K4, or sorry, T4, uh, I can get the one-handed deploying. I can get the one-handed deploying bit driver screwdriver flathead comes with those bottle cap opener carabiner and i get a pair of pliers so that's an aspect that is 
a serious you know consideration and even though i would argue that the blade obviously being longer and you know i like this actually like this locking mechanism a little bit better than the standard liner lock on this leatherman and they do have a bunch of really cool new uh leatherman uh skeletal colors out right now this is kind of like i think they call it denim which is really sweet looking and they even have like coyote and black and they have some black coated blades now which is really sweet so you can check those out again in those links below that we have for you guys but the ergonomics aren't that much worse, if you will, um, than what you're getting on a K2. This still feels pretty comfortable. I can still get a lot of control. I have that pocket clip as well. Uh, there's a lot going on for $20 less than what I'm going to pay for a K2 model. And it's going to be uh, about the same weight. It's slightly thicker. It's six points. I think it was 6.5. So just a hair thicker down by the bolts, but then tapers actually narrower than thinner than the K2. So that's something also to consider. And again, you get pliers. So for that price, man, is that the best way to spend your money? And for $20 more, I can get the wave plus that's going to have again, single deploying several different blades, pocket clip, I get scissors, I get all the stuff. Yes, it's heavier, it's about the same thickness, uh, a little bit more, it's like 6.6 .6, I think, uh, uh, thickness on the Wave, but you're getting way more capability for $20 more uh, than what the K2 can offer to you. So it's just food for thought that I wanna be giving you guys, or as one final option, I mean, is, does it just make more sense to go with a fully functional blade? Here's a $60 Voyager. Uh, that has way better steel, OS 810, or sorry, OS 10 steel, much better edge retention than 420, uh, lock back, stronger locking mechanism, and then just pick up for, so spend 60 on that and spend 20 on the Tinkerer, throw that on your keychain, you're ready to rock and roll, and you actually have more capability than the K2 for about the same price. So of the free K series and T series, the K definitely wins and is absolutely functional and if you're willing to throw down the eighty dollars you're going to get a lot of performance out of it and good ergonomics to boot but i would totally pass on the t2 or t4 throw it in a delorean and let it go back to the future but if you were to ask me you have eighty dollars to spend what which way should you go what would be the best way to spend your money honestly I would go with a pocket knife and some sort of Swiss Army tool or possibly even the Leatherman a squirt and do a tool combo or the trusty Skeletool and save yourself 20 bucks. So that's how I feel about the entire layout. The K2 absolutely fills a niche and does it well but you really have to weigh price to value to performance. So there you have it, guys. I really look forward to hearing your thoughts as well on this subject, on the T-Series, on the K-Series, on the free series in general. I wanna hear your experience, your thought. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you somewhere in the middle? I always love reading the comments and seeing the feedback and just appreciate you guys coming week in, week out. And I just always hope that these type of videos give you the content and data and opinion that you need so that you can go and make a wise decision when you're looking at your gear purchases on how to spend gear and just to entertain you. I mean, that's part of it is just to have fun and have a good time. So uh, hopefully all that has been accomplished for you today. Thanks for joining us. Check us on Instagram and Facebook, all the social media. You can see what's up and coming, projects I'm working on. Uh, you can subscribe if you're not a current subscriber and check out that other video popping up. We're throwing up content all the time. You guys are an amazing family. And I just thank you for all that you do. Without you, this channel would not exist, and you guys rock. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.